Okay, I want to share with you how you can potentially set up a mono lambda on a, uh, AWS. So there's a couple things I need to kind of talk about and define so you'll actually understand what I'm talking about. So on Amazon, there's something called Lambda. It's a service that you can use to deploy serverless functions. And I believe Lambda is the service that Vercel uses behind the hood to basically host your APIs. And there's a lot of benefits to using Lambda. There's some downsides, but there's also some pros, right? Some of the pros I can mention is you'll basically get scaling for free. You'll get logging out of the box with CloudWatch. So basically everything that your Lambda prints out will be sent to a logging centralized location that you can use Amazon's query tool to kind of search through your logs if you need to. They have like a 15 minute timeout and they also have the ability to scale up to, I believe, like four or five or six gigabytes of memory. And the, the more memory you provision your Lambda, the more CPU allocation that the Lambda gets. And then also, once you start using Lambdas, you basically have this nice ecosystem with like SQS and you can kind of plug in all these different Amazon services to use Lambdas to process things. So that's one reason why I kind of like using Lambdas. And we use Lambdas at our work for our entire AP, API and we use a mono Lambda approach. So what is a mono Lambda? Basically, you take an express service or some type of, um, or you can use like a Go API or something, but you basically take your entire service and you deploy it to a single Lambda and that Lambda is what's in charge of doing the routing, right? So instead of deploying like every endpoint to a separate Lambda function, you deploy your entire API to a single Lambda. There's some downfalls of that. Um, obviously they all have to share the exact same configuration. So if some endpoints don't need that much memory and other endpoints do, or some endpoints don't need that much CPU usage and other endpoints do, you can't really customize and you know configure every API endpoint individually. And they all have to have the same timeout, which it doesn't really matter because if you're hosting this in front of API Gateway, your timeout's like 30 seconds anyway, so you can't really change that. But it's really cool, and I wanted to kind of walk you through how you can set that up and also talk about a little bit about infrastructure as code for anyone who's interested in like DevOps and how to automate the stuff. And also um, kind of walk you through like, how do you write good documentation? Okay, because I think that's something that's important to kind of talk about. And that's something I'm always trying to learn and work on myself. So I have a project here called Simple Node Model Lambda. And the goal of this video is I want to clone this repo I want to read through the docs verbatim and make sure I can actually deploy a complete application or an API to Amazon using this model Lambda by following the docs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my workspace and I'm going to get clone this real quick. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and open that up. So let's just go ahead and go to that directory. Um, and we're going to open up the readme, right? Again, when you're writing applications, you want to make sure your readme is is solid, right? You don't want people to grab your code and get stuck halfway through the setup process because now they're just going to go and ask for help from other team members. Stuff's not going to work on their machine. They're going to have to figure out why. So the first thing I would do is every so often, delete your entire project, clone your repo, read through the readme, and follow the steps to make sure that you can reproduce the exact steps to run it locally and deploy it. Um, I'm not going to read this out loud to you all. This is like a little bit of background information about like why and how the stuff is set up. Um, and some notes, but let's just go down to the dependencies or that you can call this like the prerequisites. Like what do you have to have installed in your machine before you can actually run this stuff? So in this case, it says I need an IM user role and policy set up that I can use to deploy this Lambda, which I do have set up already. I need the AWS CLI. So if I do AWS and type in help, does this actually print out? Um, it does. You also do version, and that's what version of the AWS CLI I'm on. Make sure you click on the docs. Make sure you can go and does this take you to the right page? Can I follow the docs and install the AWS CLI? It looks like I can. I can just go here and follow that. That seems good. Um, so AWS configure, I know that's going to work, but I would probably run this. I would set this stuff up manually um, and make sure you have all these things set in your environment. So at this point says node 18 installed, like you could potentially document the steps to install node in case someone doesn't know how, but there's kind of some type of responsibility of like how much knowledge should the person know if they're coming into this project, they should probably know how to install node, right? Um, JQ is installed. They should probably know how to Google that. You could also just say like brew install JQ if you're on Mac, right? But if, if you're working on a project that's going to be used by a lot of people across the globe, you don't know what OS they're on. Um, I would probably say you should probably be using Docker, but you could probably just list out steps for other operating systems or links just to make sure this is clear and then create a .env file using the env sample. So this is like the, the important part. Do we have an env sample? We do. So let's go ahead and look at it and let's go ahead and copy and paste this. I'm going to rename this to that. Okay. So let's see if I follow those steps correctly. 
create a .env file using the env sample. Now, I would even take this a step further. I would say run this command, and I would say copy .env sample to .env, right? If you can make the steps even cleaner and easier for someone to follow, then like that's good. Let's just delete that. I'm going to run this. And does it create that file? It does. Awesome. So let's let's run through here. So there's also some steps missing. Um, I would say we should probably modify this to have the correct domains and certificates set up. So let's go here to the readme. And I'll say modify the .env file with your um, desired domain and cert. Now again, like depending on who closes this project, they might be able to follow these steps. They might be completely lost. Um, but for me and someone who kind of knows a little bit about this, they could open this file and I could say like example mono lambda. I want to modify this thing. Okay, so I follow the steps. Am I good to go? I don't know yet. So how to run. I'm going to do a yarn. And let's see if this actually spins up our thing. Now, one thing I noticed is that I don't have yarn as a dependency. So I should probably say yarn is installed. Now, do you really need yarn for this project? Probably not, but this is the, the thing that I'm using for this project. So I kind of recommend that you do have it set up. Okay, so I did yarn. That installed some stuff. I'm going to do yarn dev. I want to make sure I can go and load up this application. So when running this, notice that there's like no information about like where's the API located. So someone who's completely new to this project, how will they know how to do this? How will they know how to access? So what I would do is probably just add a little helpful console log and say like um, the API is hosting, is hosted at this location. And I'll just probably say like HTTP, local host. Um, I think this is off my screen. And I'll just say, Port. Now I'm going to go ahead and just say port is equal to process.env.port or I could just do like 8080 here. Okay, so hopefully um, someone could follow this and now when they run this it says it is hosted at location 8080 and let's read the readme a little bit more. Um, it would be nice if it actually had an example endpoint that you could hit. So I'm going to say your server is running. Here. And then I'll say 12345, access the status endpoint here. Okay, so let's make sure this actually like you can click on this and you can get an endpoint. Okay. So that's a little bit more of a user-friendly onboarding process. And I know like you could spend more time like making this look nice and formatting it, but the point of this was and when you're working on your project, make sure you take time to clone a fresh copy of your repo, run through the steps, make sure that when someone who's never touched this project before starts to use it can easily follow these steps and like deploy something. So now let's go to the next thing. I'm talking about different concepts in this video. So this is like a more well-rounded software engineering video, in my opinion. The goal of this project is to run a single command to get an API deployed to a mono lambda, right? So to kind of craft a solution that does this with a single command, you have to add a couple of, you know, smart things in Amazon to make sure this all works. Okay, so hopefully if I do a yarn deploy and I follow the setup things correctly, this should deploy my API that has a status endpoint to, to Amazon on a mono lambda. And I should be able to access it after this thing's done. That's how you know you set up a really good infrastructure as code setup where you run a single command, just one command, and the entire system is fully deployed onto a cloud provider. So I'm going to test that out right now and make sure this thing works. I'm not going to talk about how that works. Um, I just want to kind of show you the process of like how do you build professional software where you want to make sure it's consistent. So let's try this out. I'm going to do a yarn deploy and hopefully this works. Okay. So let's, let's kind of read out what it prints out. So unfortunately we ran into this bug. It's printing out null here. I don't know why. I think there might be some type of like, I need to sleep or just kind of debug this. And again, this is just a good example of why you want to like run through stuff with a brand clean slate to make sure that your readme is good and your scripts are good. All right. But since I kind of know like what's going on, I'm going to go to certificate manager and I'm going to get that. Um, certificate name that should have printed out. Um, so right here it says example mono lambda print pending vindic um, validation. Let's go into here and let's go ahead and try to figure out the C name that I need to put into my DNS. 
Okay, so it should have said, please add the following CNAME record to your DNS. It should have printed this stuff out, but unfortunately it didn't. Let's just go ahead and log in and do that. So I am using Google domains and I have like webdevcody.com. I'm gonna go to manage, I'm gonna go to DNS. It doesn't really matter what service you're using. It's the same approach for most services. You have this like area where you can add records. I'm gonna go ahead and just add a custom record. So I'll say create new record. And then I'm gonna go back to, I guess I can't go to my terminal. I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna copy this C name here. I'm gonna go ahead and paste that in. Now there's something weird I have to do to delete some extra stuff that was pasted here. Sometimes you have to do that depending on your provider. I'll put that there and I'll do C name. I'll just go ahead and paste that in. So now when I save this, that'll add it to my Google domains uh, DNS records. And at some point I wrote this script to basically wait until the certificate is validated. Okay, so that's another good like thing you should do in your infrastructure as code. Again, if you can get everything deployed with one command, whether you're using Terraform or AWS TDK, or if you're using like the serverless YAML, it's good to make sure all these steps are completely automated and that you don't have to keep on doing all these extra steps and like following a bunch of readme steps. Okay, so it took like five or so minutes or less to actually issue the certificate. Now if I go back to my terminal, at some point the waiting should check again to see if my certificate has been validated and it's gonna move on to some of the next steps. So one thing I totally forgot about in Bash is that if you modify the file and save it while a script is running, it's going to completely mess up your running script. Um, and that's just the way that I think Bash is only going to interpret one line at a time. And so if you start adding lines in between, it's going to shift all the lines down and completely break your entire process. So I might have just broken my deployment and this video might just be messed up. But regardless, you'll learn some new things. <laughs> you'll learn some new things from what I talked about. Um, but some other steps that it does, it's supposed to wait for the certificate, honestly, and then it's supposed to start creating some, some things as well. It's supposed to create the domain and API gateway, and then it's supposed to deploy my model Lambda, which I think it's still doing to Amazon as well. So we can go to API gateway here. The certificate looks good. Let's go to API gateway and see what, <laughs> what I probably screwed up here. Custom domain name, let's just go here and see. We have example model Lambda. That's set up, awesome. That is actually hooked up to our certificate, so that worked fine. Um, that's hooked up to our mono lambda that's deploying, and it looks like it actually finished. So with this might have actually worked. It might not have broken anything, even though I thought I did. And notice that there's another step that prints out. It says, post deploy, please add the following CNAME records to your DNS. So let's just follow these steps and make sure that we can follow these. I'm gonna go back to my DNS here. I'm going to add yet another manage uh, custom record. I'll add a new one here. And let's just go ahead and delete that. Um, C name, and then we're going to copy that information. Okay, so this should give us like a real domain or a subdomain that's going to point to that API gateway custom domain. Okay, so a little bit behind the scenes, API gateway has the ability to create custom domains. And you need to do that if you want to allow your DNS provider to kind of route to your API. And that's what we kind of just did here. We're kind of pointing my domain, or my, I guess I should say my subdomain, to the API gateway. And now if I go to webdevcody.com slash status, keep your fingers crossed. Hopefully this works. We should get back an OK. And there you go. So the application is fully deployed. The API is fully there. And again, this was all done with a single run command, right? So the takeaway from this video, I know it's kind of all over the place a little bit, but if you're dealing with infrastructure as code and you're trying to automate your deployments, make sure it is simple enough that it's a single command that you run and everything else is taken care of, right? Add in the error handling, add in the retries, add in the weights, and make it as nice of a user experience as possible. Because sometimes what happens is like, if you're working on a larger team or a larger project, you have to have multiple environments. You might have to have an environment for dev, for staging, for testing, for production, for pre-prod. And you need to basically quickly deploy these APIs to whatever environment you may need. And the more automated you make this entire process, the more time you're gonna save you and your team in the long run to just get this stuff deployed as fast as possible. Um, if you wanna check out this project, I know I didn't really talk much about like what do these scripts do? What does the serverless YAML do? That wasn't really the point of this video. This point was just more talking about like the DevOps side of things and to making your the readme very clear and the steps good. So if you enjoyed listening to me talk about this, give me a thumbs up. 
comment, subscribe, press the bell icon. Uh, like always, I have a uh, Discord you can join if you want to talk to me directly or just find a place to talk with other developers. And I also have a newsletter that you're welcome to subscribe to if you want to get tips and tricks on web development in the future emailed to you. Have a good day and happy coding.